Hello. So in this video, we're talking about the Bahrain uh, Residency by Investment Program. And what we're going to do here is exactly explain our step-by-step -step process of what we did to accomplish this. We got our residence permits now, and we got the two-year um, kind of self-sponsored visa, it's called. So we're just going to run through a, like I said, the step-by-step -step of exactly which, what we did. And just to let you know, what we're about to tell you is we would be considering this as like kind of pure gold if we were kind of stumbling on this video uh, about six months ago because uh, the government does have a very clear path of how to get this visa and the residence permit, uh, but uh, you will run into a couple of roadblocks which can easily be overcome just with some, some simple tips here that we're going to provide to you. It is the weekend and we're not really doing too much today. Uh, we have a couple of uh, stops to make and so we're just going to take you along with us and just kind of uh, take you along for the ride and tell you what we did during that, that time. So you might ask uh, if you are looking at this video, maybe you're wondering uh, why would you want to move to this country? So uh, Bahrain is actually rated the happiest country in the Middle East region Yay. and uh, it also has uh, a very friendly business environment. The people here are very well known for uh, being very accommodating and welcoming and we completely agree with that uh, based on our experience as well. And the cost of living here is also the lowest in the GCC so uh, it is something for you to consider that uh, whether it's your housing costs or food or insurance or your, your dental or your medical like these are all things which which really add up and so I think this makes a big difference. So the first thing you have to do in order to uh, come here is obviously uh, you're going to need a visa, uh, just uh, a visit visa. So that's uh, what we did is we got the uh, one year uh, visit visa. This is not too hard to get. Uh, if you go to uh, Bahrain.bh or if you just do a Google search for uh, for an e-visa it's called. So you're looking for the one year visit visa. This is going to cost you about uh, 40 dinar and the uh, that'll get you into the country it has uh, you're going to be doing only uh, 90 days per visit so you have a full one year but each period of time you spend in the country is only 90 days you can extend this for uh, about uh, just under 30 dinar I think the cost of the extension is I think 25. Uh, 25 25 okay yeah somewhere between 25 and 30 yeah. so uh, Keep in mind the extension is only going to get you about two weeks of, uh, of extension. So to get the residence permit, don't really expect that you can pull everything off here in this video, that you can do it within 90 days. I, I don't think it's possible. So our recommendation is to uh, go to the UAE, uh, start here with uh, Wiz Airlines. You can buy a very cheap ticket. You can just go and uh, come back within a few days and the government will give you a fresh 90 days on your on your one-year visa so there is no kind of limits like if you look at uh, we did another video on on the Saudi visa for example the one-year visa visit visa with the Saudis is you only have 90 days maximum for the whole year before the actual visit visa expires so Bahrain will allow you to stay for the entire year up to 90 days so just keep that in mind I think we have to get out twice I believe well, the second time is more because of like uh, me, which uh, we'll, we'll cover later, like what happened. But I think it was just you and our son, like you guys got it done way before me. So for you guys, you guys only got out once, but I have to get out twice. Yes, yes. And, yeah. and that had something to do with marriage certificates, which we, yeah. we will get into <laughs> we'll that for that, you. So, yes. so yeah. So anyway, that's, that's what you do to get in here. And the second thing you want to do is, uh, so our video is about, like we said, residency by investment. So what we're talking about is property investment. So the minimum is 50,000 uh, dinar, which uh, times by 2.65 if you want to get the USD equivalent. I believe the euro is somewhere sitting around 2.45 right now. And so that's the minimum to get the, the residency visa. So the first thing you want to do is just kind of spend some time, uh, you know, if you've never been here before, you might want to spend some time investigating the areas and there are a lot of different neighborhoods to choose from. And then just pick 
you know, what's best for your family or yourself in terms of what your lifestyle is. So I can consider maybe just using a few months of your visa to just investigate what area you want to live in. And the other thing that we found out later is uh, for this process, we used a lawyer and a real estate agent. So uh, both of these, I think, as far as I'm concerned, they're both optional, especially the real estate agent. You, you might want to be a little bit more serious about the lawyer, but um, uh, one thing that we did notice here is that uh, we're going to talk a little bit about paying for your property as a foreigner because it's a bit of a challenge to, for some people to get money here because the Bahraini dinar is not really exactly sort of a, a widely known currency around the world. It's it's uh, fairly kind of low down the chain in terms of reputation. Uh, although it is pegged to the U.S. dollar, it's still a, a lot of the uh, global transfer companies will not really deal with this currency, so it is a bit of a challenge. Uh, the other thing to consider is that lawyers here uh, do not act as a third party when it comes to paying for property. So they will not take your funds and then transfer that funds to the seller is you have to be paying the seller directly in some way and so you want to be making sure to do that in a way that is is legally binding that you have the correct paperwork in place with the seller or the developer in that case so that you're so for that reason you might want to seriously consider using a lawyer and uh, furthermore on that point I just want to tell you to consider using uh, an international law firm and a, a lot of them are actually not more money in that compared to local firms is we, we had some pretty crazy uh, quotes from from local firms yeah. actually which I was kind of surprised <laughs> by and so the the reason I'm saying that is because the international firm is more likely to uh, do exactly what they say they're gonna do on paper and they'll give you a actual letter of intent where they describe everything they want to do for you and what the fees are and what are the situations if you're going to be charged more money for some reason. The local firms, uh, according to a lot of uh, Bahraini people that I've talked to about this, is the local firms will kind of come up with some reason to kind of tack on some extra fees to your your kind of process here with, with buying the property. So. This is why I really think that you should consider looking at uh, international firms when you're doing this. So once you've found your property, then uh, what you're going to want to do is, just like anywhere else in the world, is you have to sign the purchase and sales agreement. So what you've got to be aware of here is that you may notice that the purchase and sales agreement is not exactly as complete as you might want it to be. So this is another reason why you need to have a good international lawyer to help you to, to work with the seller or the developer to make uh, a contract which is sort of covering all the, the aspects that you would like to have covered uh, in a purchase and sales agreement. So that's something we, we went through, right? Is, yeah. uh, I will actually say like having a lawyer is essential. Like having an agent might not be that huge of a deal, but lawyer it's definitely like highly, highly, highly recommended. Yes, I, I very would, necessary. Actually. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that's a good point. Yeah, so the lawyer saved us like a lot of like really helped us out in so many things we might have missed and then we might have didn't think about it. Yeah, because right? the yeah. the agent like I'm not really sure exactly how it works, but it is possible that the agent may actually have some incentive to send you into certain buildings or certain developers or even certain neighborhoods. We don't we don't know, but. Uh, you know, if you, if you do have an agent, that's fine, but uh, but just make sure that uh, the agent is experienced and and knowledgeable of, of the local area, and that they're not just going to kind of uh, push you into, uh, like for example, right now we're we're in the in Bahrain Bay, the financial harbor. This is kind of uh, like we don't live here, but this is one of the more expensive areas, uh, especially for expats. The, the prices are very uh, fluctuating based on where exactly you're going to go and and Bahrain Bay is definitely I, I would say the most expensive area. So once you've signed your purchase and sales agreement then uh, as mentioned earlier is you're going to come up with a situation is where you have to pay for the property so if you don't have a bank account here which in, in most cases you will not be given a bank account here unless you have a residence permit or uh, what they call a CPR. So the CPR is a is a number which is like an ID number and a card that goes with it. And 
this is used for basically doing everything in the country is if you don't have this card most banks will not give you a bank account so what we did is um, depending on where your home country is uh, we used the bank uh, HSBC which um, you know s some people don't really think too highly of this bank especially uh, when it comes to overseas dealings but what, what they have is the advantage there is that in some cases uh, you speak with your local banker in your home country and they will set you up with a account manager and they will kind of get the ball rolling. Uh, in our case, we were able to open an account here even before we got our residence permit and our CPR. So we were able to transfer money from our home country to Bahrain into a, into a local bank of HSBC um, Middle East. And so that allowed us to pay for the property just with a you know just like a regular manager's check or a cashier check so if you don't have that choice you want to go down uh, the other choice is you're gonna have to most likely do a wire transfer directly to the seller so that sounds a little bit uh, dodgy compared to the cashier's check so when you when you are looking for the property you might want to consider uh, seeing if you can buy a property directly from a developer rather than a resold property from a from like a private individual so but but if you do go either route is you still want to make sure that the lawyer is going to help you with that because the lawyer will not take your money to help you pay for it but the lawyer will help you make sure that what you have signed what you have signed with the seller is is something legally binding and so that way you're not going to have any any kind of problems where you know maybe the seller might try to back out of it or something I, I don't think that's possible but uh, that's that's why you want to be very careful about how you pay for your property here. Bahrain is a country which has a really good mixture of modern and traditional. So you're going to notice that um, there's kind of other countries in the Gulf region that they kind of get a bit of a reputation for um, being a little bit kind of what people call sort of plastic, if you will. So I, I really don't think that applies here. Uh, right now we're in one of the more modern areas, but uh, we are gonna go later today into some of the more um, traditional neighborhoods, which uh, the thing is in, in the capital city here of Manama, that there are still a pretty sizable handful of the local people will live in Manama, and they, they do live in other areas of Bahrain as well. Uh, but it's just that the um, you're going to get that mixture everywhere and the people are more willing to talk to you than what our experience is in other areas of this region is you're going to have people that are more open and kind of welcoming to you they'll give you help if you need something and it's it's really something that we noticed a lot today the weather's a little bit uh, kind of hazy it's uh, most days you're not going to get this kind of low visibility but there is a bit of a haze and some clouds going on today and um, you know, so it is kind of uh, just is what it is I suppose and so getting back to the residence permit uh, so with the self-sponsored visa is you're not permitted to take any kind of job here in Bahrain is you have to um, this is more meant for people who are you have some kind of an online business or you're an entrepreneur or you have a kind of location independent job or you can kind of do something to do with your computer where it's is your that's what your job is then this is what that this residence permit is meant for so just keep that in mind uh, you can come here on obviously employment is if, if you can get an employment offer the, the employer will sometimes help you out with getting your residence visa as well but that's a completely different program. So this permit in this video we're just talking about is the self-sponsor visa only. After you've signed the sales and purchase agreement and you've paid for your property, then you're gonna wanna do something called getting the red book, which is what they call the property title here. So uh, the red book is a very, very important document, which is you're going to keep with you from now on and it's it's pretty much on the level of what you would be guarding your passport with yeah. so uh, yeah just, just just really keep that in mind that once you get the red book that just like don't lose it at any cost guard it with your life <laughs> yeah so so the red book is uh, 
you'll get it. Uh, it's about when, this when big, you, uh, and it's red. Yeah, it's red. So <laughs> that's why it's called a red book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when you go to to close the deal on your property, is uh, is you'll be given the red book, and uh, so this at at this point in time, uh, the property title will, believe it or not, still not have your name written in there. Uh, so this is done by a place called the SLRB, which is a government department called the Survey and Land Registration Bureau. So what you're going to do here is you take your red book to the SLRB. This is in a neighborhood called Senabas. When you purchase property in Bahrain, you got to pay a 2% uh, land, or not, not, not land transfer, but like a property transfer tax. So this tax is reduced down to 1.7%. If you pay it within, I believe it's two months of the close of your deal. So uh, that's what we did. Just to, you know, you gotta pay it one way or the other. So you mm -hmm. might as well just pay it away and just to, to save it the just money. To save the money yeah. there. So uh, you pay the 1.7 percent, and then this takes them about a week to 10 days ish to uh, to you give them the red book, and uh, you know it's it's kind of something where the <laughs> the one guy tells you they're like no. Don't lose this book. Don't give it to anybody. And then the first thing you have to do is you have to give, give it to somebody. So, <laughs> so you you give it to them, and then so they they take it from you, and they'll give it back to you ten days later, and they'll they'll have your names of uh, you know if you have single ownership or joint ownership, those are both fine, and uh, they'll give it back to you at that point, and then you just take it and keep it in a safe place after that. So then that is the actual uh, property deed, which you gotta. Once again, just really, really guard this document after you get it. Buying a detached home in Bahrain is uh, generally not a possibility for expats unless you're down in the far south of the country, which is an area called Durat al Bahrain. So, uh, this area, like for example, we're just kind of we're just making another stop elsewhere, which we're kind of coming through here. And this is one of the residential neighborhoods, which kind of looks like one of the better ones. And so what the government does is it'll protect certain neighborhoods from foreign buyers to, in order to maintain price stability. So that, that way, uh, it'll not kind of have any possibility of making these sort of uh, real estate bubble situations that uh, you might see elsewhere around the world that it gets very expensive for the, the local citizens to purchase a, a home. And so what happens is that the government will just kind of completely cut off foreign buyers from a lot of the neighborhoods actually. So uh, this is something you might wanna, like if you are gonna have an agent, this is the, the main job of your agent in our opinion is to make sure that they give you all the neighborhoods, not just some of them that are available for, for foreign buyers because the as we mentioned earlier like the, the financial harbor kind of area that's somewhere where you can buy as a, as a foreigner but you gotta you gotta kind of uh, be aware of the price and just keep in mind a lot of the, the things that are your requirements so just make sure that make sure your agent is actually giving you all the information there's quite an extensive list of neighborhoods that are available for purchase so uh, I'll try to put down some information below in the description of the video to, to let you know just kind of an area where to start looking but there are there are some kind of ones that are kind of your bigger names like Seif for example and Sanabis is also will allow it and you just gotta also understand that there are some pockets of real estate in areas which are not permitted for foreign buyers where they will have some pockets where you can purchase and that's actually something that a lot of people don't know. Well if there's a lot of people are really interested in this topic I think we'll make a separate video about this just let us all know on the uh, comment section. Yeah that's that's a good idea like we'll just make a video like uh, you know neighborhoods of Bahrain to consider like as a, as a foreign buyer or something like that. And so now we're just taking a little pit stop here. Uh, we're just gonna kind of chill out by the water, and this is uh, this is an area called Tubli Walkway. Beautiful, super beautiful. The next thing you have to get in your process for the residence permit is something absolutely essential, 
uh, which is the Iwa bill. So the Iwa is the name for the utility company here in Bahrain. It's like a state-owned company. So EWA is uh, Iwa bill. And so without this, uh, unlike many other places in the world, is without an Iwa bill here is that if you don't have that account transferred over into your name, is that you cannot really finish the process at all is you'll, you'll never get the residence permit without the EWA bill. So, so th this is something that um, you might actually run into a bit of trouble with, uh, with getting this. So because Memory flash. <laughs> the, the thing is that they, um, they, it's sort of this whole thing of the chicken and the egg is that the, you'll often be asked when you're trying to get your EWA bill is the, if you're, going into a big building, for example, and you're buying a unit, is the developer will often ask you, say, can we have your CPR so that we can register your EWA account? And then you'll be like, oh, well, I don't have it yet. So I'm still, I'm still in the process. And they'll be like, okay, well, we need the CPR to like, they'll be like, try to get your CPR and then, uh, and then we'll get your EWA bill. So, so then you go over to the EWA company and you'll be like, uh, hi, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to get my EWA into my name please and then they'll say oh can we get your CPR also so it's it's this whole thing is uh, like you're doing uh, <laughs> so especially during the pandemic in our case is that the 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 EWA building and the whole department was completely shut down to any kind of in-person appointments so this is actually something which which we're not the only ones that run into this issue of mm -hmm. of transferring the EWA account but there is a process in place uh, which you kind of just have to be a bit persistent in order to get it. So, persistence uh, is the key. <laughs> yes, very persistent. Yeah, so, so what you got to do is you have to um, you have to use an app called Skip Lino. So Skip Lino will, uh, as the name would say, it'll help you to skip the, skip the line. So you download Skip Lino and you want to make a virtual appointment with Iwa and they'll give you a time and a date and so forth and then so you, you'll go on your computer uh, you're going to want to have your passport and a few other things going on uh, they'll they'll tell you exactly what document you need and so it is possible just remember if you are moving to Bahrain and you're currently in this process just remember that it doesn't matter what anybody tells you that it is possible to take your passport and your red book and that is sufficient to get the EWA account transferred into your name. So well, that will... Uh, <laughs> that's what we did, and then it worked. Yeah, like, in my case, I, I did it a bit of an unconventional way, as I was just kind of looking for some extra <laughs> kind of opportunities there for some face-to-face -face contact with basically anyone I could get a hold of, and I was I was able to get it done. But the, the legit way of doing it is skip Lino, and this the, this is the exact process in place to do it. So just, just remember, just... If you run into some roadblocks, just don't worry about it. Uh, persistence is the key, and soon enough you will have your EWA account, and then that will be used to... Uh, you, that's actually one of the things that's required to apply for the residence permit, is you have to show this to the the other department, which works on your residence permit. To, to the, the EWA account is one of the things you need, so it is very essential. Mm -hmm. The next requirement to get the residence permit is uh, health insurance. So this is something which, uh, you know, is very important. We have a little bit to say about this. And our experience is that there are quite a wide variety of companies which are offering you health insurance. And what, what you may not know as a newcomer that we now learned is that uh, if you compare the the cost of health insurance and you, you kind of ask like what do a lot of the local people do for health insurance so the cost of health insurance just to go and get care at a hospital or see a doctor is far less than uh, many countries around the world and I'm mainly pointing the finger here at uh, the United States and many other of the Western brand countries so this is really like a so, like, for example, somebody who's visiting the United States, they would never in a million, like, uh, years to want to be visiting there for any period of time uh, without health insurance because, as all of us know, is that many people have been bankrupted in the U.S. due to their medical bills, and it's just simply not the case here. 
However, the government does require you to have medical insurance in order to give you the CPR and the residence permit. But it has to be um, a government approved company though. That's ex exactly. That's so, uh, so if you're using outside companies, they, in a lot of cases, they will not approve the insurance for you. And so you have to look at uh, Bahraini licensed companies. Uh, so in our case, we used a company called New India, which, uh, you know, we're not paid anything to say this, but uh, really all we're doing is we're just trying to make the government happy. And India will give you, uh, New India will give you a bare bones policy that costs only, um, I think it was 100 BD per person and covers two whole years. So I, I think that's quite fair, actually. So all, all they're doing and all we're trying to do is make the government happy and mm -hmm. say, like, uh, okay, uh, you've got your insurance. So that way, um, you know, to be honest with you, this policy is probably not going to get you too far. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the actual claim amounts are quite low. And but what you do have to know is that the costs of, um, like, this is something you'll see in China as well, is that a lot of people will just kind of pay as you go in terms of uh, your, your, me your medical bills if you have to go see a doctor. It's uh, much more affordable than what you would find in the US. Uh, I'm not really sure about, uh, I, I think Europe is kind of a mixed picture, but uh, medical costs vary across the world. And uh, here in the Middle East, at least in Bahrain, uh, they are definitely on the lower end of the spectrum. Uh, you do have to worry a little bit about, uh, watch out for companies which are trying to kind of, uh, you know, milk the expats a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so especially if they see people who are showing up, they're coming from Western countries, and mm -hmm. they'll, they'll know this. It's pretty unlikely that you, you don't know what's the, what's the actual cost of the care, and they're just going to assume that you're kind of have that kind of U.S. mentality mm -hmm. if that's where you're coming from. Uh, so just really keep that in mind that what we did is just get the bare bones. Like all you want to do here is keep the government well, happy and just kind of yeah. kind of get the requirement done. Mm -hmm. So arguably the most important thing when you're coming to Bahrain, if you are married, is having first uh, your marriage certificate, which you most likely have it, but you also want to get this document stamped at your uh, the embassy of the country where you got married and so this is very important that um, if you do need to get this document done that the government insists on that uh, this document must be stamped by the embassy in Bahrain of the country where you got married so this might be a bit of a problem for you depending on where you got married uh, but if you got married in a country which does not have an embassy in Bahrain, then you have to find out which, uh, which country is responsible for, for Bahrain, for, for the citizens of that country, and then you'll have to use that embassy to get it stamped. Uh, however, uh, we're going to explain to you something about how exactly this works, because if you do have to get it stamped outside of Bahrain, that's actually not acceptable. So if it is the case that you're um, you're getting your document stamped in another country, which is uh, which is Bahrain's dur jurisdiction, so uh, in a lot of cases, uh, well, there's only about, um, if I'm not mistaken, it's only about 60 countries or so, roughly, like have have an embassy. There are a handful of European and uh, and uh, various areas that uh, of the world that don't have an embassy here, so. You may have to go to UAE, you may have to go to Saudi Arabia. And so if you have to do that, uh, first you need to visit the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, Bahrain uh, government. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a location in the map down below in the description of where this is. So you have to go there and ask them where you need to get your documents stamped. And then you either have to visit that country or send the document there by courier and get them to do it remotely. And after that, then you're going to take the document once again back to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Bahrain, in Manama, and they have to add their stamp on it as well. And so it's only after that that, that your spouse uh, is able to get the, uh, the self-sponsor permit. So in our situation is, is even though both of us were on the property title, 
is that my, my wife was not given the permit until later, which, uh, you know, you could argue that's a little bit unfair is because she's got more or less the same, like, well, really not more or less, it's exactly the same uh, ownership of, the, of our property as we do. And what the fact is, is that she needed to get her, um, the, the, the marriage certificate had to be stamped by the government in Bahrain as well as, as the second stamp of the country we got married in before this was, was approved. So that's the reason like I have to get out of uh, the country one more time to extend my visa for another three months. So just give yourself like plan enough time to for the whole process and then be patient. Yeah, it's just patience and then uh, they will give it to you. It's just that uh, the best is if you're just if you're married in a country which has an embassy here and it's just, you know, some of these smaller countries, they just don't have, uh, you know, embassies for every country. It's not really possible. I don't think there's really any country in the world that has, uh, you know, 212 or whatever number of countries there are. But, uh, but yeah, you'll just, you'll see that uh, this is, this is something you'll run into and this is the, how you get around it. So is the thing is that uh, the agent who's working on your application, like the government agent is, they will give you, they will tell you exactly the steps of what to do, but sometimes you're going to run into cases where there's uh, things come up which are not kind of in the, in the government rule book. So they might actually um, not know what to do and, and they, they might kind of like just kind of leave you to go find the answer on your own, which, which in that case, that's when you go to the, the foreign affairs ministry. And when you're making the purchase after you've signed the agreement and you've made the payment, so so when you this whole thing about the red book is you get the red book is a place called the notary. The notary is just a sort of a, a professional who will help you to to do all the the document transfer or the the ownership transfer, I should say. And this is where you will get the red book. And then so you have the choice of a public or private notary. I don't remember how long the public notary takes, but it takes quite a while. And then the private one, you have to pay, I think it's around 100 BD, 100 BD-ish, yeah. give and take. But you can done that within like the same day. And then the benefit here is, uh, well, with, well, of course, well, the benefit with the private one is that you get it done, like, you know, the time really quick, but you have to pay. And then the public one is free, but you have to wait. So in our case, you know, like we were renting at the time, then if you don't get the red book, like everything else is depending on this red book, right? And then all the whole process, everything. So for us, then we rather spend 100 BD and then just to buy us more time. So it depending on your situation. If you have a lot of time, you know, you don't mind waiting, then go with the public one, it's free. But if you're kind of like in a rush, then I will say the private one is the one to go. Yeah, yeah I think it really is on your own situation. Like if, if you come here and you have some kind of like a temporary accommodations that's, uh, you know, maybe you have some family or friends here or something that you're just kind of, uh, that the, the time is a luxury, but that's something that we definitely did not have. So, no. <laughs> so yeah, we were kind of uh, under a bit of... Um, you know, not pressure, but at least at least time was was not on our side because you want to you consider your your visit visa with the ninety days, mm -hmm. and you got to consider that wherever you're staying at the time yes. is you're paying for that, and it's yeah. just like, and also just kind of the, it's it's much more peace of mind just to be like uh, kind of in in your own home and like to kind of have things kind of settle down. Cause, oh yeah. Because this kind of this kind of experience can be kind of a it's a piece of mind you know, for some people a little bit overwhelming. So it just kind of uh, just kind of smooth it out a little bit to to get the private notary. Mm -hmm. So basically, that's it. That's really like the just an overview of what we went through. Uh, this is something really um, you know it obviously does cost some money to to do it. Like we got the the two year, which uh, they charge you they charge you sixty BD to change from a visit visa over to the residence permit. And then on top of that is uh, two years, I think it was 200 VD. 200, exactly. And yeah. then so you can get five years or 10 years. But, uh, you know, just, just consider what I was saying earlier about the, uh, you know, the just the, not that just the cost of living is because Bahrain is definitely not, would be considered cheap, but it's not a high cost of living country. And the real estate is 
much more fairly priced than than many other places in the world where you just cannot the value uh, yeah. yeah there's just just much that's just kind of the best way of saying it is just the value is much better mm -hmm. and so so once you do all these steps that we outlined here then you just go through uh, back onto the same website that you got your visit visa and you apply for the residence permit and then uh, and then they uh, they'll they'll process it fairly quickly after that and then you're gonna uh, in in my case, I got a, a stamp put into my passport, like a one of those big stickers, and then uh, for uh, like they, they later on they change the they change the policy later on. So for my wife, they, there's they call it like the e visa. So like now it's it's sort of like a no no sticker, and they just kind of uh, that's it. You just kind of you get your permit, you print it out, it has a QR code, and then you're you're pretty much done after that. And then we will uh, give you guys a list of like uh, how much the whole thing costs. So you have an idea, you know, from basically the beginning to the end, you know, approximately how much you're looking for. Yeah. So and, and you got to weigh kind of like the, it's it's kind of the overall thing is is does definitely cost some money to do it. But you also got to consider your own situation because, uh, you know, Bahrain is a very business friendly country it's a very uh, kind of tax friendly country also so that really depends on what's it, what's your situation with your home country is that um, like where is your actual residence gonna be and and you know what's your what's your work situation what's your tax residency these are all things which uh, depending on your situation like can actually pay for itself in the end is that mm -hmm. it's it is it, uh, much worth it to come here if you do have that kind of a setup for your for your work so it's it is a, a very good lifestyle country as I mentioned earlier that uh, Bahrain is considered as a, is rated the happiest country in the Middle East and it's also known for the ease of settling down and also a good kind of work-life balance is this is really uh, something that uh, that the country is known for so oh, yeah so just kind of consider that as you go along too yeah we notice like every single weekend there's always something going on always and there's like you know if you're into music into arts and yeah like kids activities and you always find something that's why so far we're really really enjoying here yeah and it's and it's really like uh, to be honest with you like th this country gets a bit of a bad rap for kind of uh, a lot of people do think it's kind of a bit boring here and kind of you know too low-key but in our opinion this really depends on kind of uh, you know what are your information resources like who's telling you what's going on and things like that because if you look at um, you know there's no um, you know indoor ski hill or something like that here <laughs> yeah. like it's, it's not like a, you're gonna see like a lot of the stuff we're posting is is a lot more of like they hung on to a lot more of that authenticity here that's mm -hmm. kind of uh which is yeah we really enjoyed it like, you know, you're, you're yeah. gonna get that kind of more cultural experience and you'll you'll kind of feel it a bit better that's right yeah so that's that's pretty much it for this video and we're gonna try to chop the video up into sections if you are kind of using this as a reference and if you do have any questions please drop a comment below and you know just uh even if you're not considering coming here just maybe consider giving the video a like just in case uh there are people who are coming here because uh you know we would have considered having this video like if if somebody was giving this video to us at the time we were coming here then we would definitely be so thankful very happy to have this information <laughs> so it, this is a it is a journey and a process so, oh yeah so yeah yeah that's uh all right Thanks yep. for watching, guys. Bye. Bye, -bye. Mm.